All right, hi everyone. Welcome to our job search strategies workshop. My name is Andrea Boyle. I'm the assistant director of career development. Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Nancy DeKille and I'm the director of career development. And we're so happy that you're joining us today to learn more about um, resumes and LinkedIn and how to develop a great resume and utilize LinkedIn for your benefit during your job search and beyond. All right, so to start, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you a little bit, um, some things about uh, LinkedIn and some, what you can do with your profile and how you should fill out your profile and things like that. So let's see. So here's kind of like a little LinkedIn profile checklist. Um, so you wanna make sure that you have a photo when you are signing up with LinkedIn. Now, by the way, this is a free service. You don't have to pay for it. And we actually recommend that you don't pay for the premium because they do always try to push that on you and it's really not necessary. Um, so you basically will just kind of fill out your information, um, have a photo on there because I feel like that always helps kind of get, you know, the face to the name sort of thing. Um, and the photo should be very kind of not busy, very clear of who you are um, behind either a plain background or maybe even outside. Um, as you can see in the photo of David, he looks like he might be outside. Um, just something kind of neutral. Um, and then your headline, what you can have on there. Um, you can tell people like what you're excited about and the cool things that you want to do in the future um, Should be kind of succinct and very short about who you are. Um, it's kind of like a quick summary um, But then there's also the summary where you can actually fill out more about yourself um, Saying, you know what you've been doing what you're looking for things that you're interested in um, And then you would add your experience. So here you're gonna list all of your jobs. It's kind of like your online resume so you would put where you're working, whether it's full-time, part-time. Um, you can even, even, even add volunteer experience on there too. So then you wanna add what you've accomplished at these positions. Um, and you can even include photos and videos, which is great. So if you have a presentation that you've done at a particular job that you are really proud of, that's something that you can add onto LinkedIn as well. So then we can do, um, you can add your organization. So if you've joined any clubs at school or even outside, so after you've had some experience, um, organizations that you're involved in, anything like that you wanna put on there um, would be worth mentioning. And then what you did within that organization, that's helpful. So next we would have your education. So you wanna make sure that you have Chestnut Hill College on there or wherever you are attending or where you've attended. Um, and what degree that you received while you were there. Um, making sure that you have all of your um, education listed. If you've gone, gone to multiple institutions, you can add multiple on there. Um, later on, you can see kind of down the way, you can add courses, so we can get to that um, as we're going through. But that's something else you can add. So like I said, you can add volunteer experience, um, any causes that you're interested in, and then you can even add skills and you can have your connections endorse you for those skills. So you can add things that you think that, you know, you're very good at. And then as your friends are visiting your specific profile, they can say, yeah, actually this person is really good at this. So with David, for instance, he has 12 people endorsing him for economics um, and 11 people, you know, endorsing him for startups. So it's really good. The more people that you have being able to vouch for you, um, always looks great. So you can add your honors and awards on there, um, anything that you've achieved out of school, in school, anything like that. Um, you definitely want to talk about all of your accomplishments. So making sure that you get all of that in one place is great. Like I said, you can add your courses on there. So anything that you took at Chestnut Hill um, or even outside of Chestnut Hill, if you were taking extra courses um, at different institutions, it's worth it to put that on there as well. Projects you can put on there. Um, so anything you know that you've done, again, in school, out of school, anything that you think is worth mentioning, um, you can put those things on there. And then you can also ask people to um, write recommendations for you and publish them on your profile page. So asking your manager, professors, classmates, um, anyone who can really vouch for your work ethic, um, or even as a person, just who you are as a person. Um, it's worth it to, to ask them to write a little something about you um, and see what, you know, what they have to say, which is great. 
All right, so that is kind of like an overview of LinkedIn. The one thing that's good about LinkedIn, um, it's basically, like I said before, it's your online resume um, and it's like a professional social media account. So if you're worried about, um, you know, having a positive presence on social media, this is one way to create that positive presence. So um, it's definitely worth it and it really helps us out as well. Um, it helps us to keep kind of a tab on what you guys are up to. Um, and you can always connect with us individually um, or connect with us as our office. We have a, a group called Chelsea, uh, CHC Career Development, I think is what our official group name is, or Chestnut Hill College Career Development. Um, you can connect with us through that. And then um, you can stay up to date on all of the things that I'm posting um, or our office is posting. And um, so, yeah, so that's a great way to, to keep that connection going without, you know, having to email or something like that. Um, all right. So anything I, else you want to add to it? Yeah, actually, um, I was uh, speaking with a, a recruiter from a, a large Philadelphia based company. And she said that she actually looks at people's LinkedIn profiles and accounts even more in depth than she does their resumes. Mm. So you really want to make sure everything's up to date and just keep adding and adding. There's no um, list, you know, way that you have to like sometimes a resume that you want to ha want to have it as concise as possible. LinkedIn, you can really add so many different things in, as Andrea mentioned, your um, organization you're involved with, projects you've worked on. So I think it's a really good way to showcase yourself and um people recruiters go out and look for people that's why they'll, you know make sure your headline is really great and your summary because they'll see things there and they'll reach out to you directly so i think a, a linkedin profile is is critical especially in this day and age that people are you know working remotely and virtually so it's it's a good way people have a lot of time to kind of delve into the to it a little more so definitely uh, make sure it's it's up to date and you use it and you know to the fullest extent yeah definitely all right so let me see here i will stop sharing okay and then nancy do you know how to share yep i'm going to share my screen now and we're going to talk about resumes Okay, so this is just kind of like an overview of what your resume should look at, if, you know, especially that you have a little more experience. Of course, your first name, your last name, make that a little bigger and a little bolder than the rest of your um, contact information. Then you'll add your street address, city, state, zip, email, and phone number. Um, if you're not comfortable with your address, you could always just put the city and the state whatever you're comfortable with, but definitely your email address is, is critical and make sure it's a, you know, kind of a professional sounding email address. I know once you have experience, you are um, you, utilizing that to make sure it, it's professional. Then you'll want to start with the professional summary here. So it's kind of an introduction that sets the tone for the rest of your resume. It's intended to provide a broad overview of your professional background, it should emphasize skills, experience, knowledge that you can offer to a potential employer. Uh, try to focus on a single main idea that shows why you're the perfect fit for the job. So you're going to have to probably tweak that a little bit for each job to which you're applying. You don't, you don't want to have a canned say. It could be pretty much the same, but you'll tweak it slightly depending on what you're applying to. Then you can have a highlight section <clears throat> if you're interested in doing that. So you want to highlight maybe six to eight skills um, that you have. You don't have to use punctuation. Um, write it in the present tense. Um, capitalize the first word only. Just use short phrases. Don't go into a lot of detail because these are just your highlights. Um, choose skills that are most relevant to employers and to the job to which you're applying and use the same number of skills in each column if you have them in columns. But if you just have them straight uh, with bullets, that's fine too. Um, that next you'll go into your experience. So you'll, you'll say experience and then you will um, list the name of the company and then the city and the state. Then you'll put your uh, job title and then the dates um, that you've worked there, st the starting month and date to the ending, or if it's a current position, just say to present. Then you'll um, 
have your um, responsibilities and achievements listed in bullet form. It's much easier to read and you could really get a good point across. So you wanna focus on the task and results that were most relevant to the position you're applying for. So, you know, you'll really look at that job description and see what they're asking for. And that's kind of what you'll try to list from your experience. Um, you don't have to use complete sentences when you use bullet points and you don't have to put a period at the end. Be as specific as possible and use numbers to showcase and highlight your attributes and achievements. Um, list your jobs in reverse chronological order, starting with the most recent and then go back. Be aware of your verb tense. You always wanna start with a good action verb. So you don't wanna say responsible for, you wanna say develop, coordinate, managed, um, th those type of things. And if it's a present job, use a present tense verb. If it's a job in the past, make sure the verb's in the past tense. Um, even like include other, like maybe internships where you, when you were in school um, that are, or, you know, kind of relevant to what your major was and what your position and experience is. Also add volunteer positions. Just because you didn't get paid for something doesn't mean that you didn't gain a lot of experience. And you could even list that the same way you do a job. You could list the organization like Habitat for Humanity, you know, uh, Norristown, Pennsylvania. And then you could list what you've done there. I mean, you maybe had a long standing relationship with them. So list it at, at bullets if you did enough. Um, so definitely think about that because you're showing your whole person, the, the whole holistic being that you are, not just you know cut and dry. It, it's kind of a conversation starter too sometimes when employers see that. Then you'll go down to your education. So you'll list Chestnut Hill College if that's, you know, hopefully you're one of our alums or students, and if not, you list the college where you're attending or have attended, the city and the state, what your, um, degree was Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Arts, Master of Arts, Master of Science, um, what your major was and when you achieved that degree. Um, so some additional information for your uh, resume. As I said, you wanna use active verbs in the proper tense. Um, you want to um, go on to uh, onetonline.org. Uh, and you'll search for industry specific examples that you can use to modify or suit your needs. So say for instance, you're applying for uh, a marketing manager position. You can look that up on ONET and that's a, a site designed by the Depar US Department of Labor and it's very robust. So you'll look up that position and you'll see the different um, categories, different skills you need for that, the different experience and get some wording from there because that will help you to beef up your resume. Um, if you have experience that's unrelated to the position you're applying for, move it to a separate section or, or just consider leaving it out. So it depends on what kind of space you have and if it's something that would be uh, relevant and if it's not relevant, if it's interesting. Um, if you've done you know a little bit of job hopping or have a little bit of break in the action you might want to use a functional resume and what that does it highlights your skills and abilities um, as opposed to being chronological so um, if you have some gaps in your professional experience this is a good way to go and what you would do you would organize it by categories based on your skills or your qualifications so look at the job description for cues about what to emphasize here so typically your skills are organized by theme. It could be customer service, verbal communication. So you would put that as an overview and then bullets under that and specific examples of projects, tasks, assignments, um, and then add a work history section following the skills. So following the skills that you listed, then you would put work history and you could put XYZ company, Philadelphia PA, and when you worked at that organization. So it, it gives them an idea where you attain these skills. So that's um, just a little overview of what, you know, a, a resume should look like for someone that has a little bit of experience.
Thanks. Um, I just wanted to mention for the O net, it looks like you're, we're missing the letter T. I know. I noticed. I just noticed that yeah. too. So I'll have to fix that. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to point that out for anyone. Yeah. Onetonline.org. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's fixed it here, but I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll make sure it's fixed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so since we didn't have anybody join us, um, in case anybody who is watching this has any questions, um, you guys can find us on our, at least find our contact information on our website. Um, so we did a couple different things. Now that we're mainly working from home, we're not really doing any in-person um, appointments. We developed a website called um, From Hill to Home, which you can access from our, um, our main page. So let's, can we show that? Can you say it, Andrea? I have it up on my screen. No, so you might have to um, go back to like stop sharing and then reshare. Okay. Like hit share screen again, yeah. And then click on the screen you wanna share. Okay. Okay, great, yeah. All right, so this is our main page. And then at the very top where you see check out our From Hill to Home for all things virtual, you can click on those words. And then you can actually see all of the other things that we've made kind of all virtual for anybody who um, is looking for some assistance and they just wanna do it themselves. So if you scroll down, here's our, our email information if you wanna email any of us. Um, but if you scroll down, you can see all of the other things that are listed on there. So any career fairs and webinars that we hear of, you just click that read more um, and all of them pop up. There's so much going on um, that we hear about. So just wanna keep you guys in the loop as much as possible with all of that. Um, you'll just have to keep scrolling down, Nance, just to get oh, okay. the, yeah. And then the next thing, I know there's a lot on there, um, remote job search tips, um, you can check that out. Bunch of different links on there. Uh, making sure that you're using Handshake. Um, I think next week we were going to do something about, um, you know, job searching and, and how to go about doing that. And we're going to touch on Handshake and I'll show you a little bit of what that looks like if you haven't already um, finished your profile or anything like that. That would be a good thing to do. Um, any information about grad school, if you're thinking about attending grad school, um, our virtual office hours that we were doing. Um, every Thursday from 4 until 4.30. Basically, we just kind of open up our Zoom link and wait for people to show up. Um, so if anybody just wants to kind of drop in and ask a quick question and then they can leave, that's the place to do it. Uh, virtual job search group where you can ask to join. Um, basically, we're just sharing information about things that we hear. Um, if anybody's, you know, gone on interviews, they would let us know or um, anything like that. So it's, it's kind of just like an open group just to talk about their struggle with the job search and all of that. Um, internship information, resumes and cover letter samples, um, career chats. So here we're posting, you know, this video we'll post. Um, we had a video where we interviewed Kate Mulvey from United States Liability Insurance. That will be, that should be on there by now. Um, if you click read more, I think that should pop up. Um, yep. There you go. So then you can click on that link and it'll take you to our YouTube channel where you can watch that whole interview. Um, it's probably about 25 minutes long, something around there. Um, we keep them under 30 minutes, so you can always guarantee they'll be under 30 minutes. Then there's some interviewing tips if you are interested in that. Networking, um, fraudulent job posting, red flags. If you're kind of worried that maybe you were involved in something fraudulent, um, you know, that's, you can look at some of that information and then what to do next when you feel like you were kind of duped, um, how to go about dealing with that. So that's all the stuff that's on there. Um, again, we're always available. We're always here. I know our hours are typically listed as 8.30 to 4.30, but we're always kind of monitoring because there's not much else happening being that we're all kind of stuck in quarantine. Um, so definitely take advantage of us. We're here to help. Um, we know that some places might not be hiring right now, but there's other things that you can do in the meantime. Um, you know, just beefing up your resume, um, your LinkedIn, making those, like maybe reaching out to old connections that you might have on LinkedIn or making new connections on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, and just keeping those doors open and letting people know like what exactly that you're looking for so that they can keep you in mind if something pops up. Because you just never know who you're talking to and, and what they might know. Anything else you want to add, Nance? 
Yeah, I think that sounds great. Um, next week, we talk about job search. Uh, we could also maybe look, throw in a little bit of informational interviewing, mm -hmm. which will help you with your job search. So uh, stay tuned for that. And um, I, think, I think we just about covered it, but don't hesitate to ever reach out to us. You see our contact information there. Um, as Andrea said, we're, we're available and we really wanna work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we could have a phone meeting, we could have a Zoom meeting, whatever works for you. So good luck and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks. Thanks for joining.